An analog computer shown here realized using four ideal op amps shown in blue. You can see that VI at input is applied and V out at the output is showing up. We want to show that this analog computer and this circuit effectively realize and solve differential equation that is it's of second order and is shown here. So it solved this second order differential equation. Notice that there are two feedbacks, one via resistor 4R that is connecting V out to input, and then another one internally via resistor R over 3 that is connecting node X to input. So let's quickly solve this problem. Okay, the best way to quickly solve this is writing a KCL at this node. Um, so to do that, notice that VI initially observe a, a non-inverting amplifier that has gain of negative 1. Uh, it has gain of negative r over r, which means negative 1. So given that this non-inverting amplifier has a gain of negative 1, when vi applied an input at this node, you, we're going to get negative vi. So let's just start from there. Okay, now we are assuming four op amps here are properly biased. They are not saturated in linear region. So by properly biased, I mean for all four op amps, we have the positive negative supply voltages connected properly so that they are all in linear region of operation. Since they are ideal and op amps, and then they are in linear region, we can assume virtual short is valid for each of the four op amps. It means that at input of the op amp, voltage at positive input terminal is equal to voltage at negative input terminal. And since for all the four op amps, you can see that the positive input terminal is AC grounded or connected to ground. So we can assume that both of them are zero as, as long as the circuit is operating in linear region of operation. So with that in mind, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write zero here. I'm going to write zero and zero and of course zero. So let's write KCL at this node. Uh, there is this, so as you can see, let me change the color so that it's uh, clear. So what we have is we have this current flowing. And uh, so let's name that current uh, I1. We have uh, this current flowing. Let's name that current I2. And we have this current flowing. Let's name that current I3. So, um, and uh, nothing can go through the, input terminal of op amp, ideal op amp, because it has infinite impedance. So whatever the sum of I2 plus I3 plus I1 as KCL here should flow to the uh, through the capacitor. So what I can say is if I name this current I of cap or IC, then uh, KCL at node, let's say, a, by that I mean this node here. So KCL at node A is equal to, is indicating that I1 plus I2 plus I3 should be equal to IC. All right, so I1 is simple. You can write I1 as negative VI because one side of this resistor that is shown here is negative VI, the other side is zero volt. So it's just negative VI minus zero divided by R. And uh, for I2, it's also simple. You can see that on one side we have V out, on the other side we have zero. So it's just simply V out divided by uh, 4R. And uh, for I3, you can see we have X. So on one side is on one side here is voltage at node X, Vx. And on the other side, we have zero. So I3 is Vx uh, divided by uh, R over 3. And the sum should be equal to I cap, I of C. So the current that is going through, the current that is going through this capacitor. We know that the current of cap is simply uh, C times derivative of voltage of across cap with respect to time. So uh, what we can do is I'm going to just write C and then the voltage across cap, so the first derivative, voltage is on one side we have zero volt, on the other side of cap we have x which means vx, so it's zero minus vx divided by dt. So it's the derivative of uh, zero minus vx with respect to time. Okay, so let's clean up and let's multiply both sides with R so I can get rid of it. Then becomes negative VI plus V out over 4 uh, plus v, three, 3 times VX is equal to RC 
uh, there is a negative sign there, be careful, is equal to negative RC uh, dVx, so dVx d, so the derivative of vx with respect to time, first derivative. All right then, so let's keep this equation number one. I'm gonna uh, just have this as my equation number one. It's uh, the first equation we got. Now, let's relate vx to v out. vx is here at the input of this resistor that I'm highlighting, and v out is obviously at the output. As you can see, it's not that difficult. What we have, so uh, what we have, what we have is uh, just this circuit, and then we have just a, an inverting amplifier here with a gain of negative one. So let's simplify it. At this node, we have negative V out. I just re need to relate X to v, v of X to negative V out, and that's not uh, difficult. I can say again another KCL uh, at at this node. I can write. Uh, so let's let's name this node as node B. Uh, so KCL at node B. I can say the current that goes through this resistor R is the same current that has to go through this capacitor C because nothing can go through the input terminal of ideal op with infinite impedance. So if that is the case, that means the current that is going through R, which is Vx minus zero, because the voltage at node B is zero because of mutual short of this op -amp. So divide by R equal to, and then we have um, the same idea. So this current that is going through this cap is negative, so it's going to be um, C, D with respect to time, and the voltage across this cap, as you can see, on one side you have, we have zero volt, on the other side we have negative V out, because we just found it negative V out. So it would be zero minus, and then minus V out. Okay, so what I found is Vx over R is equal to C dV out over dT. That's uh, very helpful. So um, what I'm going to do is, um, and I can just uh, multiply both sides with uh, R so that I get rid of uh, Vx over R. Let me write it this way. Vx is simply Rc, the first derivative of V out with respect to time, dV out over dt. So it's equation number two. I'm going to substitute equation two in one whenever I see Vx. So... Uh, therefore, what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to say, uh, substituting, substituting, um, two in one, so using two in one, basically, uh, substituting Vx from two in one, then substituting Vx from two in one, we get negative Vi plus V out over four, uh, plus 3 times Vx is 3 times Rc uh, V out, first derivative of V out with respect to time, is equal to minus Rc, and then you can see that we have a derivative of Vx, Vx but then we have, uh, so it become R square C square, second derivative of V out with respect to time. Okay, almost there. So let's uh, just shuffle things around. So I'm going to do that. And uh, let me just uh, use a different color so that it's clear. So if I reshuffle things around, I get um, I get this outcome. R square, C square. And then um, I have a second derivative of V out over with respect to time plus three times RC uh first derivative of V out with respect to time, plus V out over 4 equal to VI. That's exactly what uh, the problem was stating. So the kind of relation that, the kind of relationship that this circuit, analog circuit is realizing, or analog computer, is a second order differential equation that relates V out to VI. And if you want exactly to realize what is shown here, just set RC equal to 1. And you get exactly what is shown above. Uh, RC equal to 1 is not difficult. For example, so set RC equal to 1. 
for instance, by saying R is um, uh, 1 mega ohm and, uh, and C, for example, is let's say 1 microfarad or similar scheme that you want to think about. It. So this is just an example. Okay, I hope that this example is helpful in terms of showing how useful um, the op-amp based uh, analog uh, circuits are uh, with feedbacks, of course, here. So it's this sort of realize uh, this second order differential equation by utilizing two feedbacks, as you can see in this network. And uh, by the way, if the circuit is properly designed, it's also possible to uh, use this circuit to come up with oscillators. Um, I hope that this example is helpful.